What's up guys, it's Sing here, and today I'll be showing you guys how to do this cool liquid lava text effect. For this Cinema 4D tutorial, you guys will need a plugin called Proxy Derail, and you guys will also need Cinema 4D R23 or higher. Also, by swapping the materials around, I have come up with a few different cool text effects, as you guys can see on the screen. As always, if you guys are a Patreon member, I will leave the entire project file, not including the materials, on my Patreon, and if you guys want to copy these materials, then go ahead and check my store in my Discord, and I'll leave a link in my Discord to where you guys can go ahead and purchase these materials. With all that being said guys, let's jump right into the tutorial. So what you guys want to do is go ahead and click Mo Graph and click Mo Text. From here, go ahead and change the text. So I'm going to do Effect for an example with an exclamation point. And from here, what you guys want to do is just go ahead and align it to middle and then just go ahead and change the depth. I'm going to go with like 60 centimeters, should be fine. I'm also going to go ahead and change the font. So go ahead and just you know change the font. I'm probably going to go with Cunha, as I always do, just like that, nice. So from here, what we can do is go ahead and go to Caps, and then go ahead and go to the uh, bevel, bevel size, put this to like 2 centimeters, segments to 10. So then from here, what we want to do is go ahead and click Caps, and then go to Regular Grid, click this arrow right here, and then put this down to like 2 centimeters, should be fine. Go to display, go to ground shading, and you guys can see the geometry on your text, just like so. I'm actually going to go ahead and put the subdivision surface to like maybe 20. Seems nice. Maybe like pump it up to 40. And yeah, that seems much better. So we have some nice mesh on our text, just like so. Alright, so from here I'm just going to go ahead and turn off ground shading. So from here, what we want to do is go ahead, hold down right here, and go to Volume Builder. Now, if you guys have, I believe it's R21 or higher that has it, although I'm using R23. I could be wrong, but I know R23 has it. If you guys don't see this, it's because you guys don't have uh, R23. So from here, what you guys want to do is go ahead and put the mode text into the Volume Builder, just like so, and it'll get all pixelated. And from here, what we want to do is put the voxel eyes down to like 3, maybe. Maybe go with 2. And then go ahead and add an SDF Smooth. And then go ahead and hold down right here and then grab a volume measure put the volume builder into the volume measure and just like this we have our text so we have our text it's pretty smooth you guys can go ahead and put it into a subdivision surface if you guys would like but it doesn't really do much so i'm not going to but if you guys want it a little bit smoother or if you guys don't want to use an sdf smooth you guys can do that as well um, and you guys can also go ahead and edit the strength of the SDF Smooth to, to kind of fine tune it to get, you know, the perfect amount of smoothness that you guys want in your text. Something like this actually looks pretty nice. Probably gonna go something like this. Also, one last thing, you guys can go ahead and change the horizontal spacing. I'm actually probably going to just because it seems a little bit spaced out too much, so I'm gonna do, go with like negative 10. Uh, yeah, that looks better in my opinion. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and jump into Cinema 4D R19 because I use Octane and I do not have Octane for R23. Uh, but if you guys have Octane, you guys do not need to jump into R23. Or if you guys just want to use normal materials, you guys can go definitely go ahead and continue in R23. But I'm going to go ahead and jump into R19. Real quickly, if you guys are going to import this project file into a older version of Cinema 4D, what you guys want to do is go ahead and click C on the object and it'll make it a, a polygon object. Now this is because Cinema 4D does not read a uh, volume builder or measure if you guys are in a version that does not support it. For this example, I'm gonna be needing to convert this into a polygon object, but yeah. So I'll see you guys in R19. All right, cool, so I'm in R19. So what you guys wanna do is go ahead and hit Control C. Just go ahead, select it, hit Control C, go to window and then go ahead and import it into your Lightroom. Uh, like I said before, you guys can go ahead and get this on if you guys are a Patreon member and I will leave a link in the description to my Discord where you guys can go ahead and purchase these materials, all these materials right here. Back to the tutorial, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and move this down towards the middle, just like so. So from here, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and chuck our metal material right there and I'm going to go ahead and put cubic and seamless for the projection. So from here, what we want to do is go ahead and copy and paste the volume mesh. Go ahead and go to plugins, get proc 3 derail 2, and go ahead and put this in the uh, the proc 3 derail. Now from here, I'm actually going to go ahead and hide the volume mesher so we can see our 
kind of like messed up mesh uh, through proc3 derail. Now from here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and mess around with these settings, turn the luminosity up, uh, go ahead and mess around with the smoothing and whatnot. Um, just kind of mess around with these settings. You guys can go ahead and get more of a destroyed look if you turn this down. Like uh, if we go ahead and go like to like 10 across the board. And if we go ahead and lower the mesh, you guys can get, start to get something funky like that. Like something like that is pretty okay. Maybe like uh, three or four, seems good. Now from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get a subdivision surface, put the proc 3 derail in the subdivision surface to make it much more smoother. And I'll bump these both up to three, just like so. Now from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grab right here, and uh, hold right here and get a displacer. Go ahead and put the displacer on the volume mesh. And then from here, what we're gonna go ahead and do is go to displacer, go to shading, click this arrow and then noise and then go ahead and put the noise to around like 400% just like so and then increase the contrast just a bunch like this and like that looks pretty nice um all right so you guys can also go ahead and click the displacer and then go to object and change the height as well this will just kind of push it out a little bit more uh, i'm gonna stick with 10 you guys can also go to shading and then scroll through these and get like a different type of noise like uh for example like something like this could be pretty cool i actually might try this one out you know let's go with this one actually um all right so from here what we want to do is go ahead and hold right here again and go ahead hold down right here and get a twist from here i'm just going to go ahead and put this twist in below the displacer as long as it's in the volume measure that's really all that matters uh from here i'm going to go ahead and Go ahead and click fit the parent. This will just fit the uh, displacer, the twist deformer to the text. And from here, I'm gonna change this to like 180. And click enter and I'll make it all wonky. But then when we go to the fall off and we choose capsule, it should only apply to the middle. Now, if we move this around, we can kind of start getting some wonky effects. So another thing I also did is I rotated this uh, capsule 90 degrees, but for some reason when I rotate it like this, it just rotates the text, even though I'm selected on the twist. I don't really know why, I didn't have this problem before, but a simple fix. Put a coordinates, change this to 90 degrees. There we go. And then from here, what we can do is click these little tabs right here, and just kind of stretch this out a little bit more so that it's kind of affected everywhere. Um, yeah, I will say this plugin is just kind of a lot of experimentation. Um, you guys can get so many different results with this uh, plugin and these displacers and shaders and whatnot. But we, realistically, we just want something like that. That looks pretty cool. So something like this. And if we turn our volume measure on, we can see that we got like this cool little uh, liquidy type of effect. And if we go back on the displacer, we can bump this up to like 20 or something um, and get like more of an absurd, uh, more of like a splattery type of look. If we jump back out of the camera, we can always suck this entire thing and move it forward a little bit. Um, and then something like that. Uh, you can see it a little bit more. But I'm actually going to move it a little back a little bit. Just like that. Just like so. So I don't want to look hearing that much. Something like that looks pretty nice. Yeah. Just go ahead and mess around with this. Make sure it flows nice again. You guys can also go to proc 3 derail and mess around with these, like 400 maybe. Just kind of move these around, get different results. Um, maybe crank this up to like 300. Something like that might be good. So actually just go ahead and mess around with these settings until you guys get something really nice. Um, something like that looks quite cool. And again, you guys can go ahead and mess with the luminosity. This will just kind of make it more like, like, liquidy, I guess, if that's a word. Ooh, I really, really like this. This is definitely what I'm going to go with. All right, so uh, one last thing you can do is go ahead and hit Control C and Control V on the displacer, or you guys can actually hit Control, I believe. Yeah, and then drag it down, and then go ahead and put that into the uh, text, which in my case is this uh, polygon object uh, but 
from here, what we can do is just go ahead and choose the uh, noise again. Or actually, what we can do is just change this to noise, like that. And then uh, go to the displacer, and then go to object, and put this down to like 10. Uh, even that's a little bit too much. So what I'm actually going to do is decrease the contrast. So it's not as much, maybe like negative something like that. And then um, if I delete this material, I can get a better sense of the, uh, the you know, liquid type of melting effect. Yeah, something like that looks pretty nice. Um, I'm going to go ahead and lower the global scale to like 200%, 300% maybe. That looks much better in my opinion, something like this. Increase the contrast a little bit more, push it out. And maybe decrease this to like 8, something like this. This is what I'm going for, yeah, that looks really nice. And then put our material right back onto the following mesh here, then cubic and seamless of course. Alright, so from here, uh, what you guys want to do is just go ahead and duplicate this again. Um, I'm not going to do it just because I already showed you guys how to do it, but essentially you can make this effect another uh, time like I did before. I did it twice, just different settings and whatnot. But you guys get the idea. And uh, then from here, I'm going to go ahead and put my lava material on here. You guys can also put a glass material I did. Um, and then you guys can also uh, put a glass material on this as well. Just make sure not to, um, if you guys buy the materials, just make sure you don't put a glow material and a glass material on there because then it, the, the, re, the refraction, uh, the glass refracts the light and it just goes all crazy and you get this weird like glowing, it just, it's way too intense. All right, but yeah, I would just recommend going with like this metal material with a, a glow if you guys want to do this particular style uh, with the materials. So just like so, put this onto the subdivision surface. And for this one, you can just leave it on uh, UVW mapping, it doesn't matter. And then uh, if I get Octane out, and then I go ahead and put this to the side, change this to Path Tracing, and then click Render. You guys can go ahead and see if I jump back on my camera angle. Just like that. I don't know why this is all side. There we go. And yeah, just like that, we have this uh, effect. Uh, as you guys saw in the beginning of the tutorial, now I want to make this a little bit less, uh, dim this down a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and double click into this material. Again, if you guys do not have Octane, you guys will not have these settings, but simply turn the emission down uh, for the power. So I'm going to bring this down to maybe like 7, and that looks a little bit better in my opinion. You guys can also uncheck double-sided brightness and whatnot. This will dim it down, but it just doesn't look good, so I always check these both. And uh, yeah, and you guys can also change the color if you guys would like, but I like orange with this uh, text effect. Uh, one last thing, uh, if you guys want to render, uh, go to the render settings. Uh, you guys can go to output, change this to 3840 by 2160 at 4K. Uh, you guys can do 1920 by 1080 if you guys would like. Alright, so from there, make sure this is on current frame, so to render out one frame. Um, choose Octane Renderer, of course, and then save, uh, PNG, and then name it whatever you guys would like, click these three dots, choose it, you know, wherever you guys would like, name it whatever you guys would like, and then just go ahead and click OK. Click this button and it will start to render. So yeah, that's basically it for this text tutorial. If you guys like this tutorial, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Let me know what other tutorials you guys would like to make. And with all that said, guys, it's been Instinct signing up for now. Peace.